The victorious Buffalo Bills are with us. They are up first. Jeremy Harris. It's hard to mix up. It's, it's just one letter. Bills, Bulls. <laughs> yeah, you said the Bills again. All right, again. Bulls. <laughs> CJ Massenberg, Nick Perkins uh, represent the student body. Nate Oates is the head coach. We're going to ask him to make a statement on the game, and then we will go to questions for all four gentlemen from Buffalo. Nate, please. Yeah, I'm really proud of our guys. I mean, they showed their experience. We kind of settled in there after about the first eight minutes on defense and forced some tough shots. I, you know, I told these guys coming in, if we can keep our turnovers down and win the rebounding battle, I think we're going to win. We, we <coughs> dominated them on the glass, which was big because we were undersized. I mean, they were definitely bigger than us and had size advantage inside. Our turnovers, you know, we didn't take care of the ball as well as we'd like. We got to clear that up Sunday. But uh, the rebounding, I was really proud of the way the guys battled on the, on the boards. Questions? Start right there. Thank you. Nate, these three guys, there haven't been a lot of games this season where all three of them had huge games. Today, they get 20, 20, and 18, and Jeremy and Nick both ended up with 10 rebounds. How good can this team be if those three keep playing like that? Yeah, they combined for 60. It's, uh, it's March. It's winning time. These guys are big time winners as you can get. I mean, they know they know when it's time to show up. I would call Jeremy Mr. March for a reason, but shoot, Nick here had 20 as a freshman in the NCAA tournament when we played Miami. So CJ's been pretty big. I, shoot, he's approaching being the all-time leading scorer in Buffalo history, and he shows up in big games. I mean, these guys showed up last year against Arizona. They showed up this year. Uh, I think they know what, what it has to be, get done to win big games, and they did it. I mean. 21 and 10 and 21 and 10, two guys with double doubles when, when really we were outmanned, outsized, I should say, inside. I thought Jeremy was huge for us on the glass. He had six at the half. I was really happy with his effort on the glass. Uh, this question is for Nick Perkins. When you went in about five minutes into the, into the game, what did you see? You know, you're, you're pretty good at coming in and kind of making a quick evaluation of what your team needs to do to kind of pick it up. What did you see that your team needed to do at that point? And what did you do to really make an impact on changing the dynamic of the game early on? Uh, well, I thought the first four minutes, you know, they kind of beat us to the punch. They came out really strong. And uh, when I got in the game, I pretty much just told the guys we needed to pick it up, pick up our pace on offense and, uh, you know, get out and run on, in, on defense when we, when we get stops. And I think once we start doing that, that's when the game changed. Next two questions are right next to each other, right here. This is for any of you guys. Um, all season, you were building your resume to impress the selection committee to get a better seed. Was there any mindset, even though your fate has already been sealed with seeding, to make a statement with this win here in the first round? Jeremy, you first, and then CJ, please. Um, I mean, we're not really looking at the seeding anymore because everybody's uh, record is zero and zero when the tournament starts. So, um, I mean, we just try to lock in on the scout report and. Um, just um, do, do what got us here, so, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, f for me, I would say that um, there, there still is uh, a state, one more statement to be made, you know, to just, just prove we belong with uh, anybody in the country. You know, uh, it was some people that picked us to lose this game that we just, um, that we just played, so they might have thought that, hey, uh, they're just, they just been, uh, been hyped all year and stuff like that, so. Um, I think we can play with anybody in the country, um, and we're going to try to make this deeper run. Uh, this is really for any of you guys. Again, um, kind of going off of that, what's it like to win an NCAA tournament game the way that you did, but also the fact that you were expected to win this game? You were favored in this game, something that hadn't happened the previous three times this team's been to the tournament. Nick, you're first. Jeremy, you're second. Um, I would say, you know, the NCAA tournament, kind of like Jaron said, everybody's 0-0. Zero, zero. So coming in, you know, uh, being favored, obviously something different for Buffalo. Um, us being a, a big major from a little lower conference in some of these bigger schools. And, uh, I mean, it's good. I think it's good for the city, good for the program that we, you know, we able to be favored for the NCAA tournament game. You know, that probably hasn't happened in Buffalo history. So I think it's a good thing. Sorry. Um, can you repeat the question, Heather? <laughs> Knowing that you, you were expected to 
Uh, I mean, of course, it's a great feeling. It's March Madness, but um, I think when the horn went off, um, we didn't celebrate as much because we feel like we sh we we can play with anybody in the country. So I mean, I mean, it's good to get a win, but we we're not done yet. I don't think. Straight back, Nick. This is for you. I know Mac title game struggled with fouls, didn't really score how you wanted, but how were you able to get in a flow offensively today? Uh, for me today, um, I think it was just really just slowing down. You know, uh, I think you know the Mac, the Mac, uh, the Mac conference. You know, I was kind of kind of rushing things, rushing my shot, just rushing my play. Uh, I think tonight I was able to you know slow down a little bit mentally and uh, just you know convert. How did your team contain Arizona State at the perimeter? I think they had seven or eight three-point shots. I, can't, I don't know the exact number, but. CJ, please. Uh, I would say uh, our ball pressure uh, and just just playing team defense, you know. Um, and it also helped with their spacing. They, they were kind of uh, congested. So it wasn't really that much help to be needed, but. Yeah, just our ball pressure. <laughs> and Nate, if you could comment on that too, uh, at the three-point line, how do you? Yeah, I mean it? they were three for twenty-two. So I, 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 we did an unbelievable job guarding the three-point line. They, they now they play two bigs. They're big. They're big up front, and typically they're two bigs, except for when they bring Cherry in. They don't really have a shooter out there. So so it's kind of what CJ was alluding to with the uh, spacing. You're able to kind of help a little bit more with. Uh, Having two nine shooters out there, which enabled us to crawl into the ball a little bit more and pressure it, and similar to what we did against Arizona last year. But it was, you know, they've got, I mean, they got a really good guard play. They're just not that deep. And I also think playing Wednesday night and then having to fly in here, get in late Wednesday night. I mean, they may have like tired legs, and they just they missed some open shots too. I think our kids played really hard, and our efforts great, and combine that with the fact that they had tired legs and. You know, we definitely didn't want to give up inside play. I mean, if you notice, we were front in the post. They skipped it a couple of times, got some open looks. They did the right thing. They just missed them. So, but I, we, we knew they'd be tired, and we kind of planned on some of that. The next three questions are in this little pocket right here. Go, please. For Nate and any of the players that could tackle this, first couple possessions of each of the half, they went inside and were kind of controlling it for a couple of plays. What did you guys do to go on some big runs and – change the flow of the game in each of the halves. Jeremy first, then the coach, please. Yeah, I mean, um, I'll take the blame for that one because um, I was supposed to be front in the post both times. So um, I didn't. So they got, of course, he's bigger than me and stronger. But um, I figured it out. And um, it didn't happen as much afterwards. So um, just following the scout report, I lost focus a little bit. But I got it together. I mean, part of it was our ball pressure wasn't great either. I mean, we, we, we had to pressure the ball, so every, everybody kind of came together. And yeah, I mean, Jeremy had to guard uh, Aristic last year from Arizona, did a great job, didn't get the ball inside much, and we, he's done a good job. I mean, he's our starting four, and he's really six, seven, two guard. So we, we got to help him out a little bit with ball pressure and backside help, and we just kind of locked in. And, you know, I wasn't happy with our start to the game, like you said. We gave up four points in transition, gave up some easy at the rim twos, and once we really settled in and Knew we couldn't win the game playing defense like that. I thought everybody really picked it up. Nate, um, kind of two parts of this. It looked like you kind of tightened up the rotation a little bit, um, only going with seven guys. And I think this goes hand in hand. Javon Graves gave you guys a pretty nice spark. He's really good. I mean, he's been playing really good basketball for the last month and a half, two months. He's really talented. His, def his defensive abilities have really stepped up, which then, I mean, we've been telling these guys, I mean, look, Jeremy leads us in scoring, him and Nick tied, and Jeremy had the hard hat tonight, and he won it, and Nick would have the highest plus minus with plus 21, and typically when you're doing the rebounding defense, your offense follows. Javon's been great on defense. He was, thought he was really good on Dort tonight, and his offense has been following. And yeah, it's a little bit easier to shorten the rotation up, like these timeouts are, seem like they're about five minutes long each, and <laughs> there's more timeouts, it seems like, it's just, you know, we want to run, but you can keep playing at our pace with, you know, and I, I got a couple freshmen down there that are going to be great in the future. I just, I didn't like the matchups a little bit tonight. That was part of it. So maybe the matchups will be a little bit different. But they, they had big 
strong. I mean, if you look at Dort and Edwards, they had big, strong physical guards that just wasn't the matchups weren't there. So we did shorten the rotation. I mean, you're able to do it with the way the timeouts are in, in this tournament. We have three minutes left in this session. We have two questions up here and here. Go. Hey, Nate, obviously heading into this, the big storyline was you against Bobby. What were the emotions like going against him and, and certainly the, the outcome of the game? I mean, I thanked him for everything he's done for my career before the game. I, I mean, he's a good friend and he kind of said on Sunday night when we talked, let's be friends before and we're going to compete like crazy in. And I, I think we both coached really hard. I just tried not to look down the other way and just coach the game. Don't try not to worry about coaching against, you know, a good friend. Just worry about coaching my team and our, our players are our players are more experienced. I mean, it's a little easier. They, you know, we had a six seed. We, we talked all year about how good our regular season needs to be to up our seed. We, we were rewarded with a six. They had to play Wednesday night on a playing game. They were more tired and we took advantage of it. And then after the game, I mean, he was Super complimentary, said our kids play so hard, coming from one of the hardest playing guys to ever play in college. I mean, he was Final Four MVP, a couple national championships, and he played hard. Said our kids are some of the hardest playing kids he's seen all year, and it felt like there's seven guys on the floor that they had to play against, so he was super complimentary, and we'll, we'll touch base, I'm sure, here in the next few days and you know renew the friendship. Anything else for Buffalo? Uh, 